that looks very arty even though it's the wrong way around there we go that's better well probably not because that's now my face hi and welcome back to my channel my name is charlotte if you didn't know um today i wanted to make a video talking about something that i have talked about on other videos and i have written about in blog posts um, but i've never made a video entirely about it and that is migraines i have suffered from migraines for a few years and i just wanted to talk about what they feel like to me what happens when i'm going through a migraine attack the treatments that i've tried and the reason that i'm making this now is because i recently had a very radical treatment which um, i want to talk about later in the video and i thought it was kind of appropriate to make a video about it so let's just get started i suppose the first thing i should talk about is what migraines feel like to me I get, tend to get pain on the right side of my head from migraine, um, kind of a band, like a bit like a patch, like from there all the way down and around the back. Um, I can sometimes feel sick and be sick. If I don't have an injection in time, which I'll talk about later, then I can have seizures, which is quite scary. Um, I don't really have an aura with them. Sometimes my scalp can really hurt, but I don't know whether that's a symptom of a migraine coming on or it can trigger a migraine. Some people have things that trigger migraines like smells and tastes and things, but sleep disturbances really affect me, so either lack of sleep or too much sleep. Um, so certain smells really affect me, like bacon, coffee, some floral smells, or sometimes just a strong odour I think can really affect me. Um, sometimes it can be warded off before it becomes a migraine, but more often than not it does become a migraine. My body kind of, when, it, when migraine hits, even if it's just a little at first, I know that there's no way of stopping that until I've had an injection. They first started about, I guess about five or six years ago, because I, I can't remember the very first one that I had, but I know the first big one that I had, and I know that I was having them and I was hospitalised with them when I was making my album, which was like five years ago. Basically what happened was I had a severe migraine. Um, I'd had migraines before and I'd had a migraine the year before, and I know that I'd had to go to A&E because they were worried that it was meningitis, but it wasn't, obviously. The first big one that I had, I woke up in the middle of the night and had this horrific pain on the side of my head. I felt really sick and I went to the bathroom and managed to get to the bathroom and I started vomiting up fecal matter, which is about as nice as it sounds. It's basically shit. I vomited up shit. And I started having a seizure and I was, that's how my parents found me. I was seizing on the bathroom floor. They brought me back to bed. I had a load of sleeping tablets, woke up. It was still bad. No, my doctor sent me to the medical assessment unit, which is... It's a little bit different to A&E, I don't know how it works, I don't really understand. And I was admitted there, and they basically didn't really know what to do, as I have an eating disorder. They questioned my blood sugar, my dehydration, all of that, but I knew that it was different, I knew that it wasn't anything to do with that. Um, and they were just saying, just drink water and you'll be fine, just, we need to push fluids in you, they want to just put a drip up, but I refuse, because I don't do drips. Um, and they just gave me tramadol, which made it worse, and I kept telling them it was making me worse, but they just kept giving me it. I was in there for a few days, and eventually it subsided. I discharged myself, because they weren't doing any investigations, they were just, like, pushing painkillers on me, enough to get me home, and monitoring, monitoring, like, my levels and stuff. It wasn't doing anything, and I wasn't sleeping there, so I went home. So I, when I left hospital, I had a few migraines, and I had to go to my doctor because I realised something wasn't right and he started giving me Voltorol injections when I have a migraine to take the pain away um, which I've continued to have to this day and I now have my own kit so that they can be done not by a doctor or a nurse um, Sam has been trained to do them so he does them if I'm with him if not then my mum's best friend is a nurse so she does them so it's worked out quite well but if not I've sometimes I've had to have paramedics come out and do it. It's, it's a treatment that works very well for me. It's um, Voltarol is the same as Diclofenac, which is an NSAID drug, the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So it's like a stronger version of ibuprofen. Um, the oral one doesn't work for me. I tried it for a little while, but it wasn't strong enough and it gave me a stomach ulcer, so I had to come off it. Um, and it wasn't really doing a great job for me anyway. But the, the injections work really well. The only downside is I, because I have them so much, I went through a phase of having them almost every other day. I developed cysts in both my hips. I started to heal now, which is good, um, because we changed needles. I went to my doctor and I started the injections. And I also had been researching a preventative medication. Um, a lot of the preventatives have side effects that I'm not happy with, like 
weight gain and appetite changes and all of this but I found one that I was okay with partly because weight loss and appetite present is listed as a side effect. Um, I will just say straight off that that didn't happen for me. If you're thinking of using it for that then it didn't work. It didn't work. I just had bad side effects with it so listen on for that. I started on the tapiramate and it helped me. I started off from the lowest dose and gradually over about three or four years I tapered up. Basically tapiramate is an epilepsy medication, it's to help control seizures and I was on a dose that was so high it was on beyond the level that they give you for migraines and it was high level for what they give you for epilepsy and I was suffering really bad side effects with it and it wasn't controlling my migraines. I will go into coming off of that in a minute but yeah at the time I started and I was on tapiramate and my migraines continued. I probably needed an increase every one to two months. Every time it increased, I lost a load of hair, my skin broke out. My appetite, not my appetite, but my taste buds changed. I didn't really like sweet things. And it can have some really, really bad hormonal side effects. And it made my tits hurt. Earlier this year, I decided that the benefits of tapiramate weren't outweighing the pros. No, the pros weren't outweighing the cons and it wasn't worth being on it for me so I went to my doctor, my neurologist and asked about coming off of it and he suggested tapering down but I'm very impatient so I just cut cold turkey I would not recommend doing that, listen to your doctor I was a bit silly but I just wanted to be off it because it just didn't feel safe for me my migraines didn't get any worse and considering I've been on a very high dose and for that length of time I thought I would have some change I would say they probably, they might have gotten a little bit worse over time, so since from May when I came off it to September, my migraines did increase and I was having them a couple of times a week, whereas on the tapiramate when it was working, so a few years ago, at best I was having like one migraine a month, it was working really well for me, but it got to a point where it wasn't. I did try lots of other preventatives in that time, I can't remember the name of them, um, it doesn't really matter anyway because what didn't work for me might work for you. Now something else happened last year, it was about February time because it was just before my birthday, I woke up with a really awful migraine. What I thought was a migraine but it was all over my head and it didn't stop for three weeks, it was the longest I'd had one. I had jabs for about five days in a row and it just wasn't helping. I was, I couldn't move, I was sick, it was horrific and I thought it was a migraine up until this year when I found out that I'd been diagnosed with cluster headaches. They're a different type of headache, they can often be triggered by disturbances in your sleep and things like that, but they tend to be more focused in a period of time, so some people might get them or might be susceptible to them in the spring or the summer or the winter, but you do tend to have it more concentrated in a period of time. For me, I tend to find that it is concentrated in that period of time, but I get them every so often with triggers from my migraines. So things that trigger my migraines, so like stress, anxiety, the smells, sleep disturbances. I can get cluster headaches, but they're few and far between. And for those, I have a Sumatriptan nose spray, which is used to treat cluster headaches. So what I was going to talk about next was coming off of my tapiramate. I went to my neurologist and he recommended coming off it because he agreed that it, was, it wasn't working for me and the dose was very high. So he told me to taper off of it, but I just went cold turkey. I would not recommend doing that. You need to listen to your doctor. I'm stupid and I didn't feel safe on it, so I wanted to come off it straight away. Luckily, I didn't have any bad side effects. My migraines didn't get any worse at first, but over the summer, they kind of started to get worse again. During all of this, I have been interested in a treatment that I'd read about, and that is Botox, Botox for migraines. I didn't really know how it worked. Nobody really knows how it works and why it works, but it does. Basically, as you know, Botox is a toxin that is injected into your skin or your muscle, I don't know, and it freezes the muscle, so it kind of paralyzes it and it can't work. People use it for like anti-aging treatments to get rid of wrinkles. It was found out to be, they had a side effect of helping migraines. I found out about this a few years ago but obviously being needle phobic it was something that scared me and it was very radical and I wasn't sure how it would work for me and if I could go through with the treatment you know because I knew that it would be quite traumatic even though the benefits could be good. When I come off of the tapiramate, I decided that I wanted to give it a go because my migraines were getting worse and I wanted to have something, a preventative that would work. People had had really good experiences. So I went to my neurologist, I went to a new neurologist and he recommended it. He said, 
it would be a good treatment for me because you have to have been through several different treatments that haven't worked and that you have to have a certain amount of migraines a week to qualify for it and I qualified for it. So I was booked in for my first Botox session at the end of September and he explained that you have it every three months and you have 31 injections across your forehead, your temples, the back of your skull and your neck. So the day came and I went for my Botox treatment and I was terrified, I was really terrified. I was vlogging at the time, it's a vlog that never made it to my channel because it was shit. I filmed a little bit of me in the toilet terrified, not on the toilet, in the toilet waiting to have my Botox. I had loads of lorazepam beforehand because I was really scared and it calmed me down a little bit and I don't really remember much about the actual first treatment. I remember I went in and I lied down and my doctor was like, well try one first and then we'll go for it if you think it's okay. I was so scared and I had so much lorazepam that I couldn't really answer him and he did my first injection and he literally powered through with all of them. He was, did the first one, said okay that's okay, go. And he did all of them and it was over in about two minutes. It was over so quickly. I remember at the time it just felt a bit like being stapled over my head. It wasn't awful but it wasn't pleasant. So I had it done and I went home and I knew that it could take a while to kick in. And there are side effects like you can have droopy eye if the Botox kind of leaks. Um, obviously the forehead won't move and you can get neck pain. Uh, for the first few weeks my migraines didn't really change but then after that I noticed there was a massive improvement in my migraines. I was having them about once a week to once a fortnight and even then they were triggered pretty much by stress and anxiety. If I hadn't been in those situations and I haven't been stressed and anxious then I probably wouldn't have had migraines and it would have been, been a bit better. My neck started to hurt. About a month in I had really bad neck pain for a month and then it started to ease off. And as scared as I was and as scary as that treatment was it is so worth it. If you have migraines, you suffer from migraines and you have them severely enough to consider this and you have tried different treatments so you would qualify for it, I cannot recommend it enough. I'm terribly needle phobic and I was fine. I closed my eyes so I didn't see the needle but it, was, it wasn't more like needles, it was just like being pricked all over your head. It was really weird but I cannot recommend it enough. There's no reason to suffer. If you're in pain, you don't need to be in pain. There are treatments out there. If you've tried different drugs and you're not happy with them, then consider this. The other thing I would suggest is Voltarol injections are something that I really recommend because opiates are something that are prescribed a lot for pain, but they can trigger migraines and they are obviously addictive, so you can get caught into a cycle with them. Voltarol is not addictive and you have to be careful if you're prone to ulcers, stomach ulcers, but if you're having it intramuscular forms, the, in, the injection, then you've got that taken away as well. That's really helped me. So my current treatment is Botox, Sumatriptan nose sprays for the cluster headaches and the Voltarol injections. Two weeks ago, I had my second round of Botox. So my face is in proper frozen mode. You can see. I have an amazing Botox face. In about a week, I will have peak Botox face. It's something that I weighed up the pros and cons for and decided that although I had really bad neck pain, it really was worth doing. And I would recommend it for anyone out there suffering because as I said, you don't need to suffer. It's good because it's only once, a th once every three months. You can have it less um, if you want to. You don't have to have it in the neck. Um, my neurologist did say that if I had really bad neck pain again, I don't have to have it in my neck. I didn't have lorazepam last time and it was a bit more traumatic because I was completely aware of everything and I had a massive panic attack. It's over in two minutes, so it's worth it. I really hope that this video has been helpful to people. I hope you've enjoyed it. I wanted to make it because I know that there are people out there suffering with pain and if there's anything that you can do, then it's always worth it. And it's something that I, a few years ago at least, I wouldn't have thought about and I thought I would have been too scared to have it. But I know that hearing out about other people's experiences can make you feel a bit more open to ideas and a bit braver so I thought I'll share my experiences and maybe I might help someone else. If there's anything you want to know then please ask me down below if you want me to make another video talking about anything then ask me below. It's Christmas Eve today but it'll be going up this video will be going up after Christmas and I hope you all had a lovely Christmas and a happy new year and all that shit so thank you very much for watching I really appreciate it. Bye. And I did, but when I go, 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 tick, 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 tick